was wild. Joe Weider told me later that Arnold was on cocaine that day. Veins on his forehead were extended. All symptoms of being on cocaine. Contests are fixed. The only people who saw Arnold as the winner, seven judges and his closest friends. None of the other competitors saw him as the winner. None of the audience, or very few, only those that were his friends. There is no way that Arnold Schwarzenegger deserved to win. Not even close. Sports always have these ongoing debates and dramas. Whenever someone isn't happy with a decision, accusations start flying left and right. Some turn out to be baseless, but others come with solid proof and credibility. Well, in the world of bodybuilding, it's no different. Let me tell you about this wild story involving two big names. Arnold Schwarzenegger and Mike Mensah. The 1980 Mr. Olympia held in Sydney, Australia is to this day a hot topic of debate among fans and competitors. Let's rewind. The 1980 Mr. Olympia, hosted in Sydney, Australia, remains a contentious subject among both fans and competitors, setting the stage for a heated debate. The stage was set for new champions because the previous Mr. Olympia title holder, Frank Zane, got injured in a pool accident. But the 1980 contest in Sydney was different and rumours began to swirl that Arnold, the king of bodybuilding, might make a return. I was in the gym every day with Arnold prior to that 80 Olympia. I knew something was up. He was looking too good. He was looking too good. He was really looking, Arnold was in good shape. So it didn't bother me to hear that he was going to go on the show, especially in lesser condition, but even if he had been in good condition, it wouldn't bother me. He made his return, surprising many, but controversy soon followed. Lots of competitors were upset. They thought Arnold was in decent shape, but not on the same level as those who were gearing up specifically for this event. Many people considered this to be one of Arnold's least impressive appearances on the Olympia stage. There were several contributing factors, including his retirement and a shift away from intense bodybuilding, focusing more on his Hollywood gigs from 75 to 80. Plus, he was filming Conan the Barbarian at the time, so he only had eight weeks to get ready for the Olympia. Can you believe it? He claimed that everything, diet, training, the whole deal, was packed into those eight weeks. And you know, that's a super short time to get ready for a big show. So two weeks ago, I decided, well, I think it would be kind of an interesting challenge, really, to uh, do something in, in eight weeks that most of the guys do uh, of, in uh, preparing a year or two years in advance. But if Arnold were able to come back and win these contests after a short interval, it means that the sport of body mail has literally stood still for the last five years. This, in my opinion, is not true. Mike Mensah, total legend in the fitness world, not just for his killer physique, but also his hardcore training style called heavy duty. His unique approach to bodybuilding set him apart in the community, drawing attention to his unknown methodologies. And people couldn't ignore him. Because of this, Mike got a huge spotlight in the bodybuilding world. Arnold Schwarzenegger. He wasn't exactly thrilled about it. This spotlight in the bodybuilding world didn't sit well with Arnold Schwarzenegger because Arnold was all about grabbing attention. As Mike would say, 
You don't need to train six days a week, twice a day like Arnold does. You only need to train two or three times a week. So Arnold, Arnold's methodology was being challenged in print in the magazines. Arnold didn't like that. Arnold doesn't like to lose. Arnold doesn't like being criticized. The rivalry between Menzer and Schwarzenegger went beyond the competition stage. It went deeper than that. There's always tension between Mike and Arnold. There was tension between those two, always. They had some serious disagreements on how to train. Arnold was all about doing a ton of reps, high volume stuff. Menzer, on the other hand, was all about less is more. So it wasn't just a battle for the title, it was a showdown to prove whose training approach was the real deal. Arnold and his volume-packed workouts versus Menser and his heavy-duty philosophy. It was a real heavyweight match in the world of bodybuilding. I did not train for hours and hours every day. This is an important issue. Contrary to what most bodybuilders do, which is train two to four hours a day, seven days a week, to obtain that condition, I trained literally for 30 minutes four times a week, two hours a week. I liked to be a little bit overtrained. I went and worked out five hours a day. The, the mistaken premise there is that more is better. And the body doesn't necessarily work that way. If two hours or four hours a day were good, well, why not train 12 hours a day? Training is a form of stress, and up to a certain point in time, exposing the body to stress can be beneficial. But beyond a definite period of time, it can actually be detrimental. The Mr. Olympia is like the Super Bowl of bodybuilding, usually an epic day. But in 1980, it was different. It turned into a dark day with things getting pretty sketchy. The morning of the show, the atmosphere was much different. There was tension there. There was a hostility and negativity that, that skewed everyone's normal perception and, of course, prevented anyone from deriving the pleasure they might have had otherwise. Everything was askew at this point. It was not a normal contest. No one was talking or acting as the, the way they usually do. There was a strain and tension in the air all the way through. Things got pretty intense in the backstage of 1980, Mr. Olympia. There was a major showdown between two big names, and people were gossiping about it like crazy. Some people say they were throwing words at each other, while others swear it was on the brink of turning physical. There was a lot of arguing going on between Arnold and a few of the guys. I, I wasn't even concerned about that. I didn't care one way or the other. I, I thought I could win. It was a very large room. There must have been maybe 50 or 60 people in there, and Arnold, as usual, wanted to be the center of attention. But he had said something to denigrate Amir Badu in front of everyone, something that was uncalled for. He was making a fool out of himself, but at that time I wasn't concerned. I thought if Amir Badu wanted to defend himself, that was his business. So he was going through his annex. At one point, Boyer Co. stood up as a gentleman and said, look, why don't we just let Arnold explain to all of us right here, right now, what his reasons are for wanting to have his weight class and maybe we can get to the bottom of this instead of arguing aimlessly. And he did say it in a very gentlemanly fashion. There was no hint of malice or anything negative in his voice. And Arnold snapped back, oh boy, or why don't you stop acting like a baby, grow up and be a man which I thought was uncalled for. So I said, look, Boyer Co. said that as a gentleman, something to that effect, he doesn't deserve that. And that pissed him off. He turned around very rapidly to face me, and he literally had his upper lip was curled around, like a, he was snarling like an animal. He said, oh, come on, man, so we all know that you lost last year because of your big belly. I remember Arnold said something about Mike's stomach. Arnold said, hey, you have a fat stomach anyhow. And, like, and Mike's like, <laughs> like this. I'm like, oh my God. And I allowed that to irritate me perhaps too much. And on impulse, I ran over towards them. And I'm backstage, and these two guys are going to fight each other. I'm like, oh my God, I can't handle this. Two of the greatest bodybuilders of all time are getting ready to fight each other, and people are holding them back. I was surprised. Arnold Schwarzenegger sat down 
I scared him. He went over and sat in the corner, and as I, when he went to sit down, I, I continued at him. I was wagging my finger at him, telling him that his, his behavior was reprehensible, that it was not boy or co who needed to grow up, but him. And he couldn't look me in the eye. He literally went from being a frantic, hysterical adolescent to shrinking away like an injured child. After this interview, all the bodybuilding fans were stunned and couldn't believe what they were hearing about Arnold. During the interview, Mike revealed that Joe Wader told him Arnold was in cocaine that day. Joe Wader told me later that Arnold was on cocaine that day. And in looking at some of the photographs later on, I believe that he had a, an unusually stressed look on his face. The veins on his forehead were extended, all symptoms of being on cocaine. There is no way that Arnold Schwarzenegger deserved to win in 1980, not even close. Things weren't the way they should be. Very, very clear. If it was just me saying this, none of the other competitors saw him as the winner. None of the audience, or very few, only those that were his friends. That particular contest was so clearly fixed that every other competitor and many of the fans in the audience raised a fuss. Now let's delve into this controversy and hear from the competitors themselves on who they believe should have won the 1980 Mr. Olympia contest. Who would you have placed in first? As good as Frank Zane was, I thought on that day, uh, Mike made certain Boya Co were better. Uh, Boya looked good, but I think Boya had a certain reason needed to be better. I thought the concern Mike Metzler, Frank Zane, they were really all ahead of Mike, ahead of Arnold. I'd say maybe Oracle Metzler needs to win, Chris Dickerson next. I thought really a contest was between Metzler Cole and myself. Frank, Frank was in good shape, but he was still a little thin. I thought Mike was in excellent shape, and I was in excellent shape at their home. And the reality is, Arnold looked good, but not the Arnold that we're used to seeing. But to me, uh, Boyer was in great shape. Uh, Mike was definitely in shape, even Zane. But Roger Walker was outstanding. He was huge, he was cut. And Dennis Tenorino, to me, it was one of the best times. Mike was a great bodybuilder. Um, so, so was Arnold, uh, I gotta tell you that. It's hard for Arnold to lose that year. He's one of the greatest bodybuilders of all time entering the Olympia after a five-year layoff. It's hard for him not to win. Granted, all of the judges were his buddies, his friends. It's amazing when you're out of it for five years. You have to make a burn all over again. And that particular day in Sydney, Australia, the day of the Olympia, he was the IFBB. To Arnold, Arnold seemed to be running things. He could have it any way he wanted. There was corruption involved. There's a lot of politics, and by politics I mean corruption, without a doubt. Focus in, concentrate on one thing, and not, no matter if there's a bomb exploding around you, you do not lose your concentration. Number seven, Mike Mencher, USA. Then uh, the next year, in 1980, I placed fifth at the Mr. Olympia, a contest that I and almost everyone else who witnessed it was convinced was fixed, and as a result decided to drop out of competitive bodybuilding. Well, they can have it. They can have their contest, their Mr. Olympia, whatever it is. I couldn't care less. I actually enjoy my position where I'm at now a lot better. On that day, Mike ended up in fifth place and it really got to him. He grabbed the trophy, dropped it on the stage floor and left the stage in anger and frustration. Better definition and muscle separation.
Arnold Schwarzenegger, the winner, being presented by Joe Weider. Thank you very much. I'm, uh, I'm extremely excited about uh, winning the seventh time the Mr. Olympia competition. And I have to be very honest that this was the highest level of competition I've ever faced in any competition in my life.